It's Ladybird, Ladybird, it's Ladybird 2012. <coughs> yes, um, here's the third part of Spider Fairy's Diary and I'm reading it off my Kindle which the word, the letters are quite small. I don't know why they've made the letters so small on the Kindle but if I'm squinting that's why. Right, here we go, Spider Fairy's Diary, part three. It's 3 p.m. That's one and a half hours to tea time. I am bored. I just remember I must go and check my laundry. I feel like a cappuccino. I think I will invest 30p of my own money. I am broke. I had to buy new clothes. I have bought a t-shirt, new leggings, boots, a cashmere cloak and a pink cardigan. When my money goes in I shall have to hit the charity shops. All being well I may have to go into town tomorrow and see the bank manager to extend my overdraft. I'm not sure if I have any bills coming out before I get paid. If not I will be okay. I shall have to tidy my fairy garden away when I get home. Obviously it does not fit in with the defined psychiatric model of what it means to be normal. Otherwise they will not let me out of hospital. Also, I shall have to wash up and clean the kitchen and bedroom and bathroom, sorry. I only have two hours leave at the moment, so it's not really worth going home. No doubt I will see Dr. Lowring tomorrow. If I'm nice and take my medication, he might let me go home so I can tidy up. Oh, I just remembered. I bought my makeup in. I better go and put it on. It impresses psychiatric staff when you wear makeup. Unless you happen to be a man, of course. That's not normal. It's 3.45 p.m. I'm starting with severe nicotine cravings. The next cigarette break is not till 5pm after dinner. Suddenly I am bringing to mind Dr Treadwell in Rochdale. I hate him. He's a warlock. He put a love spell on me. I told Dr Lowring about him. The first time I walked in his office my knees went weak and I nearly fell over. Dr Lowring asked me if my pulse started racing. I said yes. Dr Lowring did diagnose the condition as love at first sight. I usually respect Dr Lowring's opinion. In this case, he made a mistake. Dr Lowring is the most approachable psychiatrist I have ever met. I feel like I can tell him anything. Of course, he is too busy to spend all day chatting with me. Never mind, I just send him letters to put in his nuts he holds about me in his office. I remember the first time I met Dr Treadwell. Once I had recovered my composure, I said to him, What on earth is Rochdale Health Authority doing to me sending me you? He was more than a bit taken aback. What do you mean? he replied aghast. I haven't even spoken to you yet. You can't just look at someone and make an instant decision about them. Why not, I thought to myself. Psychiatrists do it all the time. They make a decision to section you after a two and a half minute chat. Anyway, I changed the subject and started talking about my voices. He did keep harping back. What did you mean by that statement when you first came in? I just kept changing the subject. He did put a love spell on me. I have to be careful. If he reads this, he may sue me. Well, if it wasn't him, one of the other patients put a love spell on me for a joke. Dr. Treadwell is not a nice man. He once put me on injections when he knows I am terrified of needles. I am particularly frightened of being injected in the bottom, which is where antipsychotics have to go. I used to call him Sweet Pea Crocodile. He drips with male pheromones. 
he wears a big black cap which looks a bit like a warlock cap but it's not pointy at the top he once came in wearing a Doctor Who scarf when he knows I like science fiction tell me if that isn't flirtatious behaviour Dr Lowrin is Irish, his voice is much gentler almost hypnotic sometimes that's not to say he is soft he doesn't put up with unreasonable behaviour not even off the nurses anyway that's my trip down memory lane it's almost tea time I'm starving I just came back from the dining room I had roast beef, roast potatoes, gravy and brussels sprouts I couldn't have pudding it was sponge made from wheat Am I spider fairy or am I hero? Guess it was just a stupid vision. However, I feel different. I have all heroes memories but I feel more slender and fit. It must be the new diet. I have cut out wheat and fruit. God said do not eat the fruit from the trees. I feel fit as a fiddle. There was a bit of a riot last night. There were loads of girls outside the office demanding to go out for a cigarette about 10pm. I felt like joining in but I don't want to lose my leave and end up in solitary again. You don't even get a drink in solitary. They haven't even got a slot in the door like they have in prison. Not that I've been to prison. I've spent a few nights in the cells because of my car breaking down in the early hours of the morning. Monday 21st of March 2011 They are moving beds on the ward so I can't go out this morning. They are moving all the ladies to the male side and vice versa. It is 10.45am. What time the big move will take place is anybody's guess. At least this morning we have coffee tokens. I can't wait to go home and get on with my knitting. It is so boring, each day feels like a week in here. I wandered into the therapy room, a lady was doing silk painting. I painted a fish, I may have it framed when I get out. There was nothing hot that I could eat for dinner, I had salad, it was not nearly as good as the salads I make at home. It was just turkey, turkey slices with lettuce half a tomato, cucumber and a bit of grated carrot. Couldn't even have the soup, it was minestrone, containing wheat pasta. Never mind, I am getting well used to starving half to death in hospital and going without anything to drink etc. Hopefully there will be something I can eat at tea time. I can't eat breakfast, it's just cereal and toast. No supper, toast and biscuits. Never mind, I have bought some aniseed balls in to suck to stop my blood sugar dripping too low. I have just written a letter to Dr Lowrine asking him if I can have extra leave for my birthday tomorrow. I don't know what he will say. I would like to go home and do some knitting. I suppose I will have to put my furry garden away. It appears the psychiatric department doesn't like it. It's age inappropriate or something. In any case, they seem to find it unacceptable. I am not putting my fake spruce tree away. I shall put it in the hall. Then, I suppose, they will tell me it's a fire risk. I saw Dr Lowrin this morning. I didn't ask him about the extra leave. He looked busy. I asked the charge nurse after lunch. He said he would ask him in the morning. Ever since I was reborn as spider fairy, I feel strange, I feel different, I feel stronger and not so afraid as I was. Instead of getting frightened, I'm getting angry. Actually, I think the ward staffs respect me more for this. I don't feel as much like doing videos as my previous incarnation hero. I still like watching videos when I'm doing my knitting. I am enjoying being creative. I saw something ages ago on Britain's Got Talent. There were some old ladies doing finger knitting. I wonder how you do finger knitting. They may let me do that on the ward. Then again, 
they may say there was a danger of somebody strangling themselves with the wool. I have been reading a copy of National Ge Geographic magazine that someone left lying around. There was a picture of a scribe in Timbuktu. He was sat in his house. There was sand on the floor and all his furniture was covered in a fine dust. I long to live in a land where nobody bothers about you doing your housework. I've also been looking at pictures taken from a, inside a Viennese cave, Hang Sung Dong. The roof had fallen in places, letting in the light and rain. There were underground pools and forests with snakes and monkeys living on them. All of a sudden I understand why people go caving. Although I don't fancy abseiling, I would really love to go and explore the beautiful underground paradise. I could swim down the underground rivers with a snorkel and a dry suit. My dear departed relative used to volunteer for the Wildlife Trust. I may do the same when I get out. I am experiencing a deep desire to be at one with nature. I used to get very cold outside. However, I haven't had the heating on much this year. I think I only put it on in December when it, when it was freezing and snowing. I think I can take being out in the weather more now, like when I was a nipper and playing out all the time. Well, that's it, part three of Spider Fairy's Diary. I might put next four up, part four up next week. See you, YouTubers. Bye. Spider Fairy's Diary by Amanda Jane McLachlan. Available off Kindle, just one ninety five. Also available off Amazon dot co dot uk. Amazon dot com and WH Smiths another lead to order from WH Smiths and other leading bookstores from just eight ninety nine.